Hello pilots, welcome back to Motion RC. I'm James and today we're going to be talking about new on Motion RC's website, but the 10 channel telemetry enabled stabilized receiver coming from Lemon that will work with any DSMX or DSM2, uh, like a spectrum transmitter or receiver. There's a lot of, uh, you know, options that use that protocol. So you're going to be fine using this if you have a transmitter that supports DSMX or DSMX2. Um, now what's great about this again, 10 channels is awesome for you're going to be able to cover most plug and play models with 10 channels. I know a lot of guys love having that option. And the beauty of this, you don't have to turn the uh, the gyro on at all. You don't have to use the gyro. If you just want to use this as a standard 10 channel receiver, it's awesome. And what's great coming out of the box with it, you do get telemetry. So if your transmitter is capable of showing telemetry data, then by plugging in this cord into the telemetry port and then connecting the battery between here, uh, from your plane, your ESC, um, to your battery, you're gonna be able to get the telemetry data. And also you do have an option for an extra satellite receiver. So if you wanna put this in a big expensive balsa aircraft and get more coverage by using a satellite receiver, you have that option too. And as I said, you never have to use the gyro. The gyro comes out of the box, the gyro comes off. If you never turn it on, it'll never be on. It'll just be a standard receiver. But for the purpose of this video, we wanna talk about setting up the gyro because it's very simple. Um, and as I said, being that it's simple, meaning that there are no modes with this gyro. So it won't auto hover, it doesn't have auto level, it doesn't have like a 3D mode like some of the other gyros on the market. This is simply a stabilized gyro and it can either be on or off. So it's very simple to set up for anyone familiar with setting up gyros, but if you're not familiar, you're gonna learn here today. Now obviously some of the things you're gonna to need to do this is obviously a plane, you're gonna need your transmitter, and you're gonna need a battery to power the plane, which will power the receiver. Now, uh, when using a propeller plane like I'm gonna to do today, I'm just using a simple two-channel aircraft. This is the uh, Flightline Dora. It has ailerons and elevator. So we're not gonna use rudder in this, but uh, the rudder rules will apply. The gyro itself can control aileron, elevator, and rudder, but for the simplicity of this video, uh, doing the rudder would only be repeating the same steps for the aileron and elevator that we're gonna do here. And the other suggestion or safety tip, guys, whenever you're working with your plane, especially a propeller-driven plane, please take the prop off. You don't wanna chop off any fingers there. And EDF-wise, um, you know, just be wary of it. Uh, EDF, you're not gonna potentially cut yourself, but again, safety first, where you can remove a prop, take it off before we get started. So now let's get it bound up. Now this receiver has two ways to bind it. The old way is using the bind plug. And if anybody who's ever bound anything up using a bind plug will know how this goes. Um, you're gonna look for the port on the gyro. In this case, it's channel 10. It has a bind feature. You plug the bind plug into that port, give power to your receiver, and you'll see a flashing red light. And that means it's it's in bind mode. So then however your transmitter usually binds, you do that function and it'll bind up. Or the other option is to pull out the bind plug, give power to your receiver, and you push and hold that B button. Push it for about three seconds, and then you're gonna see the flat light start flashing red. That means it's in bind mode, ready to accept a bind do the uh, bind procedure from your transmitter to get it bound up and you will see the light change from flashing red to solid red and obviously your ailerons elevated you should hear them um you know, should hear the move you should be able to move them and you are bound up and now just for purposes of this video guys it may look like the light is flashing um that's just the camera itself to you it will appear um to the eye it will appear as a solid red light so sorry but we can't get the frame rate down enough the uh the frames per second down enough to not show the flash because it is flashing very very fast but you won't be able to see it by the eye so when it's solid red light that means that you are bound up and the gyro is off Okay, so the first step in setting up this gyro is going to be telling the gyro itself what type of aircraft you're using. So whether you're using an airplane with an Elevon setup, like a flying wing, or you're using a V-tail aircraft, or you got a conventional aircraft, but then also if you have an aircraft that you have, you want to separate the aileron channels, a little more advanced aircraft, you can do that here. But for the purpose of this video, we're just showing you how to set it up on a normal aircraft like this, one that has ailerons, elevator, and a simple rudder, even though this one doesn't have a rudder, uh, the same rules will apply. But we're using this for the aileron and elevator, so we need option C, which is a normal conventional tail. 
So now, when you look at the gyro itself, uh, if you push the C button, very quickly, you will see three green LEDs and three red LEDs light up. Now those are sort of um, your option to, to just tell you what, what menu options you're in. If anyone's familiar with the older Admiral uh, receivers or the Lemons where they had dip switches, those three lights now replace those. Now in the purpose of this uh, option menu, I'm just gonna show you the option menu quick. When you hold, so what you wanna do is put your bind plug in channel 9, which is the mix channel, and that's with the aircraft powered off. Then you're going to push the C button and hold it while you plug in the battery. And that's going to put you in the menu to select this option. And then when you're there, you only got one chance to, uh, to do this before it goes through the menu options. But you'll see uh, what they call R1, which is one the, the farthest left red LED. That's going to flash. That's your delta wing. Then you wait a couple seconds, the R2 light will flash. If you have a V-tail, that's the uh, option for that. Option C is going to be when R1 and R2 flash, um, and you see that here. And then option D is going to be if you, if you want to turn on the R3, which is the third red light. And we could talk about that uh, in a little bit, but basically we want... The first time you see the R1 and R2, so two red LEDs go on. When you see that, you're gonna push the C button once and then push it again to lock it in. So it's like a double push with about a second in between each push. And that's gonna lock in option C, which is what we want for this. But again, if you had an Elevon aircraft, when you saw the first red light, you would lock that in. If you had a VTAIL aircraft uh, for the second light, you would lock that in. Now for options D and E, those refer to dual aileron channels with either a normal tail or a V-tail. Those are going to require the R3 light. So what you would need to do, like for option D, you would have to set it up as I did as a conventional tail, but then unplug it, plug it back in to get back into that menu, and then wait for that fourth option where just the R3 light goes, and you would lock that in, and that would keep R1, R2, and R3 all on at the same time. It explains it well in the manual, but uh, for anyone using those, again, you can ask in the YouTube comments, I will help you out there. But uh, it's pretty simple once you read through the manual and how it works. But now for the purpose of this, we've got our normal tail uh, on, and you should see that those now two, two red lights remain on. So that'll always let you know that you're in the right option for this aircraft, which we now are. So now after doing that, your gyro is essentially on. Um, you just need to set up the switch to turn it on and off. Now this gyro automatically uh, in your transmitter, whatever switch you have assigned to channel seven is gonna be the switch that is gonna turn on the gyro on and off. So if you know how to work a transmitter, which you should do, that's not what this video is about, you can go into uh, your channels and set channel seven to whatever you want. In this case, I sent it to the back left, which is the H switch on this transmitter. And when you flick it on and off, you will now see that a green light will appear next to the red light in the bottom right hand corner. And that's going to let you know that it's on or off. And I can flip back and forth. So no gyro, gyro, on and off. No gyro, gyro. So the gyro is now on and that's great. Now we'll go on to the next step. So now that you could turn on and off the gyro, now the next step is making sure that the gyro is correcting in the proper direction. Because if you try to fly and your gyro is correcting opposite of what should happen, you're not gonna have a very long flight or any success with the gyro, you're probably gonna crash immediately. So we wanna check. Now the best way to check, first and foremost is, we haven't even talked about mounting this, this gyro yet, um, but, for the purpose, of, I didn't want to mount the gyro yet um, while doing this, so I just held it down with my finger. You want to hold it down nice and flat. This gyro can either be mounted flat the way I have it here or inverted flat, and it doesn't matter which direction it's facing. The only way this gyro cannot be mounted, you can have it mounted on the side, and obviously you don't want to have it mounted at a 45 degree angle. It's got to be flat and level somewhere in your aircraft, and this receiver itself is already too big for the plane I'm using, but it's just easier to show with a smaller plane like this than trying to manipulate a larger aircraft. But now your first step, again, when you want to check the direction on a gyro, uh, especially this one, 
you want to go to the potentiometers. That's those three pots labeled A, E, and R. They are the they are what's going to set the uh, the gain on the gyro, whether too much gain or too little gain. Essentially, control and controlling each of the three functions. So A for aileron, E for elevator, R for rudder. Since my aircraft doesn't have a rudder, the R doesn't matter to me. I went ahead though and turned the aileron and the elevator pots all the way to 100%, which in the manual explains, uh, think of a clock, eight, if, if it's set to 8 p.m., uh, if it's set to eight o'clock, it's gonna be off. If it's set to four o'clock, it's gonna be fully 100%. So you wanna set it over to four o'clock uh, to start this, because that's gonna give you a ton of gain and the most pronounced uh, movement of the gyro, so you can see with your eye that it is correcting in the proper direction. So basically, now that, I, now that I'm, I'm here, I have it turned on. I'm gonna pull the airplane just a little off the table. And now I start turning the aircraft quickly. So to check the aileron, basically I'm rolling the aircraft and I'm looking at the, right now I'm looking at the, uh, the aileron. When I bring the aileron up, the gyro should correct up uh, with, with the direction of the movement of the plane. If I bring the aileron up and it goes down, then I know that it's correcting Diff, uh, the wrong way. As far as my plane's concerned, the aileron is working fine, so I don't need to change that. So going to the elevator, taking a look at that, when I pitch the nose down, I want to make sure I see the elevator itself move up in the, uh, you know, up to my eye. In my case, the elevator, it might be hard to see on camera, but the elevator is actually moving down as I pitch the nose down. So that means the elevator is wrong. So I'm going to show you quickly how to change that real fast. So what you're going to do is you're going to push and hold the C button and you're going to wait for your, your six LEDs to flash and then that's gonna, then you're gonna let go and you're gonna start seeing what they refer to as G1, G2, and G3. Those are the three little green LEDs in there. You're gonna see them rotate from G1 to G2 to G3. G1 is your aileron change, G2 would be your elevator change, G3 would be for your rudder. So when I do this, I wait for the second light, which is G2, when I see that one pop up, I push the C button once and then push it again a second time right after that. And you're gonna see that it keeps that green light on, it flashes and then it rebinds itself. And now you can recheck your elevator and you can see that you've now reversed the correction direction of the elevator. And now it's working fine. When I pitch the nose down, the elevator uh, moves up and into the motion, which is exactly what I want. So now I'm done with this step. And you would just repeat the process if your rudder was correcting the wrong way or if your aileron was correcting the wrong way, then you make the change. But if they're correcting the right way, you don't need to do anything and you can move on. All right, so now that your correction direction's going, the only thing you really have to do is mount the aircraft. And as I just explained, um, I don't have it mounted here. This transmitter, uh, this receiver A is way too big for this plane. So this is, a, this is just for a demonstration. But as far as mounting this gyro, it has to be mounted level. It can be mounted level in this direction. It can be mounted level this way or it could be mounted inverted this way or this way. Doesn't matter, there's no front or back as far as long ways. You just cannot mount this gyro uh, sideways in any direction. You can't mount it this way in the fuselage. Um, that won't work, it has to be. This can be the front of the back or this can be the front of the back and it can be upside down or down. That's the only uh, as far as mounting goes. So again, I'm not gonna mount it the way it's shown in here, um, but that's the only other thing you do. As far as this goes, you are now have a setup gyro and now it comes down to the other options of the gyro, the other features you have. One of the nice features about it is automatically on channel eight. So whatever channel eight your transmitter that you're using is assigned, again, you're gonna go into your channel menu. In my case, channel eight was up here. This is the G we want, that's your master gain. So that's what's great about this. You automatically have a master gain. So what a master gain does, like if I turn on my uh, gyro, you hear it's working, the master gain knob will allow me to go from 100% to 0% gain on the gyro, but up to whatever 100% is on the pot. So um, I believe everybody, or the manual at least suggests what I do, if the gyro, if the pot's on the gyro, 8 p.m. is, is, is off and 4 p.m. is fully 100, Everybody should start their gyros and the way the manual says about 10 o'clock. So I have that on my aileron and elevator now. So that's full 100%.
and it, it, it's it's a little help, but it you know it's a you're never going to use a hundred percent gain. But then your master gain will now allow me to go from this from whatever the hundred percent on the pot is from a hundred percent down to zero. So basically nothing's happening when my when my when my gain is down. So I could be in the air, know that hey, you know what? I might have a little oscillation. You can bring your gain down until you lose the oscillation in the air. So that's an added feature, uh, which is great about this gyro, that you do have the master gain. If you don't want that function, just unassign anything to channel eight and you'll be fine uh, for there. But it's great to have a master gain, which is the other great option uh, with this gyro that helps. So there you have it guys, that's a basic setup of your 10 channel lemon stabilized telemetry capable receiver. I hope this helps you guys out. Though again, the manual is gonna be on the product page. You could download it on a PDF and go through it. That's all I did before. I just taught myself before this uh, how to do it, but it's very simple in its design, but it's gonna work for numerous options and uh, of aircraft, which is great and something our customers asked for was a stabilized uh, gyro that had more than six channels and here it is you know you get 10 channels a lot of guys have bigger aircraft um, the again the options aside from the gyro the fact that you can plug in telemetry the fact that you can add a satellite receiver just to get extra coverage depending on the model you get um, is really awesome and the beauty of having a gyro again flying on those windy days uh, it's always good there to have a little gyro help make your plane fly nice and smooth uh, uh, in the air and chop through that wind. But I hope this helps you out, guys. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the description down below. I'll try to help you out. And I could come back with a more advanced video down the road um, if I get an aircraft that has dual ailerons or something. But for the most part, it's pretty straightforward. Once you go through the process of setting up what type of aircraft you have, um, setting the correction directions and such, you're going to be good to go because it's just, again, on and off. For that gyro. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll catch you next time at Motion RC.